Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Miss Agnes Moorhead in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the exciting new radio play by the originator of Suspense, Mr. William Spear. The story is called Death and Miss Turner. Our star, the first lady of Suspense, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Hey, uh, Harlow. Howdy, Sheriff. Arrest anyone lately? No, but I want to check up on you because I hear you've been boasting you got a system that can't lose. Why, Sheriff, of course my system can't lose. It's the best there is, the Autolite electrical system on my Autolite equipped car. Why, every unit and component part is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give the smoothest performance money can buy. What system is that, Harlow? The electrical system, Sheriff, including the Autolite starting motor, distributor, coil, generator, battery, spark plugs, and all the other parts of the complete Autolite electrical system installed as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. You mean you're always right with the Autolite electrical system? You sure are, Sheriff. That's why it pays to insist on Autolite original factory parts for your Autolite equipped car. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Death and Miss Turner, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. We went out for a walk this morning. I was dead, and I went out for a walk. Miss Briggs went with me. It was her idea. I wouldn't have particularly thought of it. She brought the new picture in this morning. She took my chair and stood on it and took off one shoe and hammered the nail in the wall and hung the picture up. She asked me if it was hanging straight, and I said I thought so. And she said, well, and she took off her glasses and gave me a little inquiring expression. She always does that after she's done something for me. She wants my approval. So I looked at the picture hanging there, and I smiled, and I said... It's lovely. Plain black frame. Yes, you're right. That's just the right frame for it. I... I beg your pardon? The frame. I said it's good. The frame? Yes. Yes. There are some other pictures downstairs we could have framed, if you like. That would be a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? Not a bit. I think I could... I could sleep some more. There's a headache just hovering over me. I don't want to wait until it gets me. Of course. You finish your nap. You know what might be nice, though, later on? To get some air, go for a stroll in the park. Go out today. And have lunch somewhere nice, like 96 Piccadilly or Claridge's. How about it? I'll ring up and reserve a table. Cool. Maybe I can borrow that red coat that's hanging up in there. Yes. That's fine, Rachel. I was dead. Long, long dead. And I went out for a walk. My name is Rachel. Yes, there can't be any doubt about that now. And then the American meets the Englishman and says, Well, how are things here, old boy? And the Englishman says, Better than next year. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no sense pulling a long face. Like my dad always says, If I could get a steak, I couldn't afford it anyway, so... Are you getting tired, dear? You've seen enough of London for today? Oh, no, no. I'm enjoying this so very much. As long as we don't walk too fast. We're not, are we? Oh, no. It's lovely. How long have you been in London, Rachel? You know I can't tell you that, Miss Briggs. Yes, of course. You're just hoping that I just might let something sort of slip accidentally, aren't you, Miss Briggs? Yes, I guess so. It would be nice, wouldn't it? No, no, it wouldn't. Don't count on it, Miss Briggs. It's not going to happen. I can't risk it. Look, there's the frame shop where I got our new picture done this morning. The black frame you like so much. He's framing some more for us. Let's just go in and see how he's coming along. Is this a new shop? Yes, I think so. Hello there, anybody in? Who's that? Oh, oh, Miss Briggs, isn't it? How are we today? Fine, thank you, Mr. Putney. My uh, friend here and I thought we'd just look in and see how our little job of work is going. I see, I see. Yes, yes, that was the uh, the four oils by, uh, who was it? Ah, ah, Turner, that's it, Turner. Let's see. Ah, no, no, I'm afraid we haven't got them yet. Uh, there they are hanging up there on the line. 
They're awfully good, aren't they, Miss Briggs? Uh, who did you say... I've it? been here before. Uh, beg your pardon? It was the same. Oh, I'm afraid not. You see... What do you mean? I tell you... Well, I only I just be... opened my shop four days ago. Well, I'm not talking about your shop necessarily, Mr. Putney, but these. Oh, these paintings. I don't know. Uh, Miss Briggs brought them in uh, by Turner. Turner? That's preposterous. J.M. Turner? Why, these have nothing to do with him. In the first place, he was watercolor. In the second place, landscape. And in the third... Well, not not J.M. Turner. Another Turner. The sign. Uh, R. Turner. Oh. Interesting painter, this one, don't you think? Not exactly macabre, but uh, something shivery about it. All four of them seem to have a... Well, I guess you'd call it an ominous overtone. Really? I don't feel that particularly. <laughs> well, wouldn't you call it a little nightmare when a painter goes to this much trouble, all this detail, painting a man, his, his hands, his suit, the handkerchief in his pocket, the carnation in his buttonhole, and then leaves out his face? In all four paintings, no face. I see a face. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> of course. Uh, well, not complete, not the filled in features, but the, the qualities of this man's face are there for me, even though they're not there for you. I should know this man if I met him. We must be going. He's dead, I think. We rode back in a taxi, Miss Briggs and I. She had a bundle which Mr. Putney said she'd ordered or something. I, I wasn't listening to them. Every time I opened my mouth to say something, I gave them an advantage. Every time I went out for a walk with one of them, like today, I showed things in my expression that told them what they wanted to know. I'd fallen into the trap when Miss Briggs had suggested that walk this morning. I'd been weak. I should never have gone. I want to be dead, and I won't be brought back from it. Had in there, Rachel? Yes. What have you got there? This? <laughs> Some stuff I ordered the other day for Mr. Putney. Oh? What is it? You laugh. No, no. Well, I know it's foolish, but as my dad says, sweet heart never do a royal flush. I must say I don't know what that means quite. I'm not a card player. Anyway, it's something I've always wanted to have a private dabble at. They say it relaxes the nerves. And who knows? I'm younger than Grandma Moses. Paints. You bought a box of paints. And brushes. This one, if you please, costs two guineas. It's for the fine detail work, he says. Sable. Huh? It's a sable brush. And these things, you mix your colors on them. Palettes. And then there's whatever this is. Uh, fixative. <laughs> and, um... Well, anyway, I've gone and got a perfect smasher of a real professional kit. Now, someone will teach me to draw a straight line. You didn't buy this box of paints for yourself, did you, Miss Blake? Well, whatever... You bought them for me. That was it, wasn't it? I was a painter. That's what you're waiting for me to find out. R. Turner, the painter who does portraits of a man without a face. It's Rachel Turner. Is that it? I don't remember it, but is that it? Am I Rachel Turner? i am Wait here. I'm going to get Dr. Gleit. I looked at the door a moment after she'd gone. Then a square of white became the only thing in the room. I'd picked up a canvas board... I drew a chair forward and propped the canvas against it. I was doing my best not to think, not to govern my actions, simply to allow whatever might happen. My hand was tearing away the cellophane wrapper from the charcoal. I leaned over the square of white prop there on the chair, and like plunging a dagger into a white body, I invaded the whiteness of the canvas with a bold and perfectly symmetrical oval in black, done with one stroke. Charcoal fell from my hand. Now the oils were spreading onto the palette. Save a brush stabbing into the colors, blending them, testing the mixture of perfect flesh tone. Why? For what sake? There's a roaring in my ears like the sound of a train rushing through the night. Rachel? Well, 
we meet at last. That is to say, we meet as people meet in a drawing room, a cocktail party, perhaps, where the hostess hasn't had the time to introduce us all around. We find each other elbow to elbow at the punch bowl. At this moment, you smile to me as I hand you your glass, and I say, my name is Grice. I'm Rachel Turner. I'm a painter. Oh? The subject on which I'm dreadfully ill-informed. I'm a psychologist myself. Sir Bartley Grice. Of Her Majesty's College of Medicine. Heavens. Not only a painter, but a positive encyclopedist. How could you know that? Have we met before? We've not met at all this way. We don't meet, you and I, Sir Bartley, until some months in this year, 1952, when you're my doctor. And I'm a patient who has lost her memory. How uh, much do you know now, Miss Turner? You're going to be sorry. More than that, you'll be the object all the murderous hatred my tortured soul is capable of if you persist in bringing me back. I shall risk that. Many people hate me. I save many others from being hated. <laughs> you, uh, you painted this just now in those 15 minutes while Miss Briggs and I were talking? Oh, Mark, it's amazing to me. It's wonderful. This, uh, man's face, why him? I mean, for what reason this particular, uh, countenance? Is he real from life? What's his name, then? Who is he? I don't know. I, I saw him only once. Well, then, why do you feel compelled to bring back this face to show to yourself again now? Why? Why? It's the face of the man I murdered. Autolite is bringing you Miss Agnes Moorhead in Death and Miss Turner. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, hello. Does my car have an Autolite electrical system? It sure does, Sheriff. For yours is one of the many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Equipped with an Autolite electrical system. And Autolite is the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. What kind of chores does this system do, Harlow? Well, Sheriff, it goes to work at the flick of the ignition switch and performs every second your engine runs. It works, too, every time you turn on your radio, sound your horn, use your electric windshield wiper or heater. That's why it will pay you to treat the electrical system of your car to a periodic checkup at your car dealers or authorized Autolite service station. You can find the location of your nearest authorized Autolite service station in the classified section of the telephone directory under Automobile Electrical Service. Or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Agnes Moorhead in Elliot Lewis's production of Death and Miss Turner. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. You who murdered this man whose face you have painted here? Yes. Yes, I... How did you murder him? I don't know. You have no recall of having actually done it. You're unable to tell yourself where it happened or, or when. No. Oh, I only... I, I, I'm sure that I killed him. Yes. Uh, Miss Turner, we're going to give you something to make you sleep. Now, if you'll just roll up your sleeve, Miss Briggs, please. Please. Hold it, dear. Yes, for a period of time now, we shall need to help you sleep. I hope it'll be a brief one. You've wanted to sleep a great deal of recent months, haven't you? That was because you were afraid of reality, of your thoughts while awake. No, so you're always... Dozing off, taking a nap, staying in bed till half the day was gone. Now... Now I know I'm a murderess. So I've earned the right to be drugged into forgetting it for a few hours. I was already dead. I'd forgotten. Why couldn't I have been allowed to die? Why not have hung me for it while it didn't matter? But for what? For, for a, a murder you, you can't describe? Of a man whose death in circumstances pointing to violence we have no record? 
Why, no one on earth has come forward to accuse you of any crime. How did you find me? What was I doing? Where was I when you found me? You must remember what happened yourself. Live through that horror again. Only then will you know what is true. In the meantime, I shall help you in every way I can. Hate me if you like. It's better than hating yourself. Good night, Miss Turner. So many years to remember. A life brought back to be my own. The figures and landscapes and people which belonged to me when nothing had been mine the day before. It was all there, up until my birthday. What happened on the 16th of April? I remember the night before. It was the last thing I remembered until awaking here in the hospital on the first day of May. I was standing in the lobby of the hotel, just having got off that rickety elevator. And my bag was packed. It was there at my feet. And the porter came around from behind his booth and handed me an envelope. After that, nothing. Black. White. Piano. Tune. Train. Teach. <clears throat> Barrister. Lawyer. Pallet. Paint. Porter. Ticket. Uh-huh. Uh, train. Uh, Snow White. I beg your pardon? Snow White. She has that long train at the dwarf's carry. Oh, yes, yes. Quite right. Blood. Red. Train. A thought. Miss Turner, have you uh, noticed anything about your response to this word? Which word? The word about? train. Oh, I've put it to you three times, and each time you, for some reason, avoided connoting what one should expect to be the most commonplace definition. You you haven't answered with smoke or wheels or Waterloo Station or underground. <laughs> Have you uh, any idea why you should be unwilling to recognize the word train as a high-speed conveyance traveling on wheels on rail? I... I don't have any idea. <clears throat> uh, book? Dealer? Yorkshire? Carrier? Train? Wreck? Thank you, Miss Turner. I think that will do us for the day. Miss Briggs took me back to my room. I was in a fever. I could hardly walk straight. She kept dabbing at my forehead with her handkerchief, but it didn't do any good. I could see her lips moving, probably asking me if I was all right and could she help me, but I, I couldn't hear her. There was another horrifying, terrible sound filling my ears. I held my hands over them, trying to shut it out, but it only grew louder. In my room, Miss Briggs tried to push me toward the bed. I could see her lips framing, you must lie down, but I thrust her out of the way and lunged for the canvas board. My hands and arms were numb as though they were floating out of my control, except that they ached agonizingly. There were flashes before my eyes, pounding waves that threw my head back and forth as though I were being battered in some apocalyptic storm. <laughs> Came a frightful shrieking, torn from the throat of a damned soul in torment, and I fell forward on the ground and sat and I saw it, the picture I painted, and the voice that was shrieking was my own. Oh, I, I can't. Rachel. I can't. Rachel. Lie down. Yes, Rachel. Lie down. Oh, oh. Lie down. This is it, is it, nurse? Oh, yes. It's awful. All right, roll up that sleeve. Now, Rachel. <laughs> When did that picture there? Delirious like a mad woman. Yes, yes, I... quiet. Now, Miss Turner. Oh, oh yes. Oh, you hurt me. You hurt me this time. It's stinging. Yes, Please. the mixture's a little bit different this time, Miss Turner. But it will stop hurting in just a moment. Oh. Yeah. All ready. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's warm. This picture you've just done. Is it good? I think it's extraordinarily good. Are you sleeping? Sleeping. But awake. Asleep, but not, not asleep. Can you describe this picture to me as though I hadn't seen it? A man uh, sitting in a, a railway compartment looking out of the window of a train... 
opposite him with her back to us is a, is a woman. It's, it's as though we were the woman whose attention is on this man. As though we were this woman? Yes. Don't you mean that you are this woman, Miss Turner? Yes, yes, I am. What day is it now? My birthday. April 16th. Yes, 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 that is that today. I'm, uh, I'm aboard the Flying Scotsman Express. I'm on my way to Edinburgh to paint the moors. I'm in the first class compartment. Alone, I'm relaxed and happy. I feel the urge to paint something. Right here as the train goes speeding along. And what do you paint? A man... That is the embodiment of a man, his posture, his, his clothes. But for some reason, I, I can't paint his face. I know his face, but I find it impossible to transfer it to the canvas. I make four separate versions of him, but each time my brush remains poised in midair, refusing to invade the oval of white where the face should be. At Manchester, I got out to stretch my legs, walking up and down the station platform. And when I resume my compartment, I find that I have a fellow traveler sharing it with me. He's turned away as I enter. He's occupied with closing the window as it has begun to rain outside. As I seat myself opposite him, he turns to face me directly. He's a man. It's his face which is missing from the portraits that lie on the chair beside me. How do you do? How do you do? I, I... How do you do? Uh, pardon. Do you feel not well? Forgive me for staring at you. I, I didn't... I, I mean looking at you in this way. It is all right. Fine. I'm, uh... A painter, you see. Artist? Yes, good. An artist. Well, th this is the impossible part. Here, y you see these pictures? Huh? Oh, yes. Hmm? Very interesting. I mean, uh, not to know who it is, uh, his face. Oh, but I do know. I, I didn't feel I could do the face before, but now I can. Oh, sure. Uh, why? Because it's your face. My face? <laughs> uh, what for, uh, uh, my face? Yes. Yes, I know it's queer, but it's... Uh, I mean, you are going to put my face in there? Yes. <laughs> well, all right. All right. Go ahead. You mean it? Now? Sure. Uh, uh, what do I do? I mean, uh, I am all right to uh, sit here like this? Yes, yes, just just that way, please. Yeah, uh, if you tilt your head just a little more, that way. This is all right? Yes. Uh, uh, you're in the shadow, though. It, if there was only a little more light. Too dark. I have it. Would, it. would it be too much trouble if we change places? There's good light here where I'm sitting. Uh, pardon? If we change places, I'll sit over there and you... Oh, uh, change places. Sure. I sit down where he has been. And he places himself exactly where I've been sitting a moment before. For a moment, he looks at me, smiling. And then, it happened. There was a grinding, flashing thunder. Smoke and steam of your his face, still smiling with surprise. And then an inferno of splintering wood and glass and rending steel came screaming at him. And the car slipped into his place and got him shrieking his head. I killed him. He came back to me. It was I who was meant to die in the first place. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. He took my
You didn't kill him. You know that now. You remember. You've come back from the edge of reason. I'm going home. Sailing at midnight. It'll be midwinter. The snow on that Connecticut bridge. Those leafless elves in their rolling purple shadows. They gave me a farewell tea this afternoon, and I even had a cocktail. The hostess was much too busy to introduce us all around, but a very nice gentleman came up to me and introduced himself. My name is Grice. I'm a psychologist. I am Rachel Turner. I'm a painter. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Miss Agnes Moorhead. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, a story based on fact and taken from your morning newspaper. The exciting report of one man's efforts to prevent a national tragedy. The story is called Man Alive. Our star will be Mr. Paul Douglas. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Death and Miss Turner was written for suspense by William Spear. In tonight's story, Jeanette Nolan was heard as Miss Briggs, Joseph Kearns as Dr. Grice, Paul Freeze as the man on the train, and Charles Davis as the shopkeeper. Agnes Moorhead may currently be seen touring in Don Juan in Hell by George Bernard Shaw. Buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite staple batteries, and Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>